Hello students. Today we are going to start part two of structured query language SQL. Under this topic, we are going to study data manipulation commands that is called DML. And second is data control command DCL. To understand these two topics, we are referred the textbooks database system concepts. Second is fundamental of database systems. And third textbook is database management steps. In the previous video, part one, we have studied DDL commands, that is data definition commands, where we create the database and we where we create the structure of the database and the database objects. So under that data definition language, we have studied the uh, create table command, alter table command, truncate command, drop table command, and so on. Now, in the data manipulation command, we are going to study various commands like insert, update, delete, and select. What is my data manipulation? Data manipulation commands are used for manipulating the data stored in the table. Now, all of you know that in the relational database management system, RDBMS, relational database management system, the data is stored in the form of relations. Now, what do you mean by relations? Relations are nothing but your tables. We create so many tables in the one database. For example, if we consider company database, now in the company database, there may be a number of tables or relations like departments will be there. Then second, employees will be there in the company who are working. Then employees works on various projects. So projects will be there. Then employee works for the department, employee works on various projects, employee has dependent. Employees has insurance and so on. So there are many tables may be there in a one organization in one database. For that, we have to create the various tables. In DDL command, we have studied how to create the tables. DDL data definition language in that we have created the table by using create table command and by using various data types and constant integrity constant we have created the table now in the data manipulation language once the table is created in which we have specified the various data types of the various attributes or the columns or the fields for example, if the table is employee table in that employee ID, employee name, employee address, employee salary, in which department he is working and so on. Suppose this is the data I want to insert in this table. In the, by using DDL data definition language, I can create the table employee. I am creating the schema of the table. But I, if I want to insert the data in the table, then I, re I require insert table command. Insert is a DML command, insert. So I can insert the employee ID, employee name, employee address, employee salary, employee number, department number in which the person is working. I can insert so many records or rows in in the in this table by using insert table command insert into insert into employee and then specify the values we can specify the set of values we can insert so many records so insert is a dml command if i want to update if I want to update anything for any of the record of a particular row or number of rows, there is an update command. So if I want to change the address, if I want to change the salary of the particular employee whose employee ID is 101, that I can change. If I want to change the department number in, in which the person is working, I can change that update by using update command. Modifications for that, the data has to be man manipulated. For that, I have to use update command. Insert, update, delete. If I want to delete 
any record or set of record, then there is a command delete command from this table. So if I want to delete the particular record where employee ID is equal to 101, then I can rec delete this record. Or if I want to delete all the employees who are working in department number two, all the records will be deleted by using delete command. So there may be various options by using where clause. Now, if I want to select the data, whatever the data I have stored in this employee table, it is stored into the, into the memory of the computer system. If I want to retrieve the data from the database, then the command is select. With that, you can write select star from employee. So you can retrieve the data from the database. Star indicates the complete hold all the columns, all the rows. So select all the columns from the data from the table. Then therefore we have to use select command. Select along with select, you can perform various options. If I want to see all the employees who are working in only department number two, I can select. If I want to retrieve only the employee ID and employee salary, I can retrieve. So many options you can perform on the by using select command. All these are the insert, update, delete, and select. These are the four DML commands which are used to manipulate the data. Now data, this is the called as the data which I want to manipulate. That's why DML operations are required. Now let us see our presentation. So data manipulation language commands are used for manipulating the data stored in the table. DML commands are not auto-committed. Auto-committed means if the auto-commit variable is set off, then that time if I want to, if I insert something, if I update something, delete or delete, then it will not store into the database. Okay. So if I want to store it, I have to set that auto-commit is equal to on. Then Whatever I insert, update, delete, it will automatically save in the table or relation or in the database. It means changes are not permanent to the database. They can be rolled back. Let us see one by one each and every DML command. The first command is insert command. Insert is a data manipulation language command in SQL, which allow user to insert the data in the database table. If I want to insert into the particular table, I have to use this syntax of the insert table command, insert into. So insert is a keyword, into is also the keyword. Insert into table name. So I have to specify that the table name and the columns. I can specify the column one. Column is nothing but an attribute. Whatever the attributes of the particular table that I have to specify and the values. Specifying the attribute is not compulsory, it is optional. See the example here, insert into customer. Customer is the table name. Then customer name, customer contact number, address, city, postal code, and country. These are the attributes. So for these attributes, I am specifying the values. The name of the customer, contact number, address, city, postal code, and country. These are the values I have to specify for, the, for these attributes or these columns. There is no need to specify the columns. You can directly write down insert into table name. Here, insert into table name and values. You can specify the values 1, value 2, value 3 and so on. No need to specify the column names means when you want to insert all the values of all the attributes. Suppose in a particular table, in the customer table, if I want to insert all the values of all the attributes, then there is no need to specify the columns. You can directly write down insert into customer and the values. But when you want to specify the data into the particular columns only, and if you want to keep the other values as a null, then that time you can use insert into customer and the cust attribute names. So suppose if I if I want to insert the customer name, customer contact number and address and city, these are the two things I don't want to insert, then don't specify here. But in that case, this should not be specified as an integrity constraint as a not null. Then that time it will show you the error. But if you are not specified as a not null, then this command can work without using these two attributes. And you can insert the values for 
customer name, contact number, address, and city without specifying this, then that time system will take the null value for the postal code and the country. Second is the DML command is the update command. Update command is used to update the data, which is stored by using the insert table command. So update is a DML command in structured query language, which allows you to modify the data present in the table. This command can update multiple rows, not only single row, it will update all the rows based on your, whatever the condition you have specified. What is the syntax? Update table name, update employee, update customer, update student. So table name we have to specify. Set, set is a keyword. And what you want to set? The particular attribute name and the value. Particular attribute name and the value where condition. Condition you have to specify that for which row you have to specify. You want to do the changes. So update customer. Set contact name is equal to Vinit Chaha and city is equal to Mumbai where customer ID is equal to 104. So whatever the data, it is already there. Okay. Suppose for customer ID 1005, if the customer name was something different, it, it will now change with Vinit Chaha. And city, if the city was Delhi, then now the city becomes Mumbai. So that is the updation that you want to do with the customer whose ID is equal to 105. So where clause specify which row has to update? If you do not specify where clause, then it will update the contact name and city for all the customers. So, so this is very important. Update employee set salary is equal to salary plus 1000. So if I want to update the salary of all the employees without specifying that where the customer, where the employee ID is equal to 105, then as there is a nowhere clause, it will update the salary of all the employees. So there is a, this is called as the update command, which is used to update the data, which is present in the table, in the relation. The next DML command is delete command. Once the data is stored in the database in the form of tables or relations, we can delete any kind of data. So here, TML is a data manipulation language in structured query language, which allow user to delete the data based on the given condition. It is used to delete some or all the records. So it is depend upon condition, where condition. So syntax is delete from table name, where condition. So delete from customer where condition is equal to customer ID is equal to 1002. So if I want to delete the particular record, then specify the condition. If you want to delete all the records, then delete from customers and semicolon. It will delete all the records from the table. So where clause specify which row to delete. You can specify that delete from customers where customer ID is equal to 1002 and customer ID is equal to 1005, it will delete two records. If I want to delete all the customers whose, who are from a particular location, that delete from customer where address is equal to Mumbai, then it will delete all the records from the uh, customer's table where the location was Mumbai. So if you do not specify the where clause, you can write that delete from customer, it will delete all the records from the given table. And the last DML command is select command. Select command is very important. It retrieves the data from the table and show on the screen of screen of your display. So it will not. Important thing is that it will not update or change or do anything with the database. It just take the data as per your requirement and show on the screen. So select command shows the record of the specified table. It also shows the particular record of a particular column by using a where clause. So a table is there in which large data is stored. And if you want to retrieve only those data of a particular column, then you can retrieve the data where the only that column. If I want to retrieve the data for particular records, you don't want to retrieve the data from other 
records, then you can specify. So row wise, column wise, you can give any constraint by selecting the data. So let us see the syntax, select column one, column two from table name. So table name means this table name. Column one, column two means this attributes. If I want to retrieve only two column, three column, four column from the table, you can specify the attribute name, column names. If you want to specify, if you want to retrieve the data, complete data, then select star from table name. It will retrieve complete data from the whole table. Select star from table name where condition. So if you want to select all the employees who are working in department number two, then it will show only those records where department number is equal to two. So that condition you can specify. Like here example, select customer name and city. These are the two columns in which you are interested to see from the customer table than customer name and city. Select star from customer. It shows all the column, all the rows. Select star from customer where city like Mumbai. So when the city is equal to Mumbai, it shows all the customers who are belonging to the Mumbai city. So select command is very important to retrieve the data as per your wish or as per your requirement. So let us see the example. First, install the MySQL on your machine, either on Windows or Ubuntu operating system. You can set the password. So you will get the MySQL prompt. The first command is show databases. You can create the, you can show, see that all the databases. If you want to go to the particular database, you can write here. Okay. Show tables. That will show you all the relations or the tables in that particular database. So all these are the tables I have created. You can write down the select star from employee. Or you can see that select star from DPT. It will show you that department number and department name. These are the two columns, two attributes in which there are four departments and their department names. Another table I have created, select star from employee. It will show you all the columns here, employee ID, employee name, address, department number in which the person is working, salary, date of birth and employee ID. So while creation of the, you can see the structure of the table. So DESC, DEPT, you can see that department number is the primary key and department name is varchar. Similarly, DESC, employee, Employee, you can see the table employee in which employee ID is the primary key, employee name, not null, address, not null, department number. Here I have written here is a foreign key. That's why it is showing that MUL null. Salary, decimal, date of birth and employee. EID, it is also the self relationship with the employee ID. That's why it is also the foreign key. So you can create the tables and you can specify the various attributes and various integrity constraint like primary key, not null, foreign key, check constraint, date, and so on. Next, if I want to insert, so select star from DEPT, it will show you the, all the tables I can insert. What is the command? Insert into. Which table? DEPT table and the values. So what are the values? The first is department number, which is unique, primary key. So if I try to insert three comma in a... If I try to insert something with the three, it will show me the error because it is a primary key. So DEPT primary key, duplicate entry, it won't allow. And if I insert with any of the value apart from... 3, 4, 5, it will accept and it will in show the. Now see here, select star from DPT, it is showing that insert command. So insert is a D DDL com DML command. Select is also the DML command. 
if I want to do changes, okay? So update command, update. What? Update DEPT. Table name, set. What do you want to set? D name, if I want to change for the department, D name is equal to instead of EXTC, if I want to add as a IT department, where, where I have to specify department number is equal to five. So here, the department number five, whose name was EXTC, now I want to change it to the IT. Now you can see that select the name is changed to IT. So here you can delete, update, sorry, update. So here you can update the any kind of data with the using the D update command. Now delete. If I want to delete, so delete from that is the syntax delete from DEPT where where department number is equal to six. So if I want to delete the particular record, then it will delete and it will show you that the deep the row is deleted. Sorry, department number six is not present. So zero rows are affected. The, I can see right here that update, delete from where department number is equal to five. So it will delete one row affected and you can see that the record is deleted. So insert, update, delete and select these are the four DML commands. By using select command, you can select select star from employee. It will show you all the columns. If you are interested, select EMP ID, employee ID, EMP name from employee. Then it will show you only the employee ID and employee name. If I want to restrict from employee, then you can give the condition where, where department number is equal to two. So it will show only those names and employee ID and names where the department number who are working in the department number two. So all these are the DML commands. Now, now we understand data control language DCL. So data control language is used to control the access to the data stored in the database. That is called as the authorization. So not every user in a particular organization has equal role to see each and every data from the complete database. For example, suppose we are considering the bank as an organization, then in the bank, different user has their different roles. Based on the role, they have the rights to create the data, create the tables, create the relations, insert the data, update the data, delete the data, and see the data which is required for them. So based on the rights, you can give the privileges to the various users by using the DCL data control language. In the data control language, the com privileges can be given by using the grant command, and that privileges, if you want to revoke, if you want to remove all the privileges which given or some of the privileges, if you want to withdraw, then by using revoke command, you can withdraw the privileges. So there are two commands under DCL. One is grant and second is the revoke. Grant commands will be given by the, by the admin. The admin may be database administrator. So what is the privileges? Privileges means the set of actions that the user can perform on the database object. So not every user will be able to see all the data from all the tables. Not every user has a rights to create or delete anything or update anything. So those privileges will be given by the database administrator. So database administrator has power to grant access to the database. So what are the different privileges you can give? System privileges, object privileges, and ownership privileges. System privileges means whatever the system database objects when we define creation of the table, alteration of the table, that, that database or schema of the particular database, that, that is called as the system privileges. 
Object database object privileges means insert, update, delete that we have just seen that can be can be done by some of the users and that will be controlled by giving the grants to them. Ownership privileges means if I am the owner of a particular table, I have a right to give some of the privileges to the another user. So let's see that system privileges means what? System privileges are generally provided by the DBA and rights and restrictions implemented on the database to control which user can access how much data in the database. So as we have seen in the bank database, which user has rights to see which data from the complete database. So creation of the user, then drop the user, create any table, create any data table, select any table and drop any table that that is that comes under system privileges. So DBA can provide the create different admins and give these privileges to the database handler where they can create the tables which are required in the particular organization. They can alter, they can drop, they can select and they can they can and uh, select any of the table from the database. Next is the object privileges. So once the you give the rights to create the tables, then by perform various data manipulation operations, select, insert, delete, update, execute, references, all these, these object privileges you can provide to the particular users. Next is ownership privileges. So if the user who creates the database object, they that that user has rights, not only DBA, but that user or that uh, admin can have rights to give the full privileges about that table to the other user. So all other users having no privileges on the newly created database objects will not have their rights. But who, who is the user, who is the owner of the database object, database can give the grants to the other users. Now, how to give the grant? First, create the user. So create the user for that the command is create user, username, local host I have written because I am creating the database in my own machine. So that's why local host I have written. So name of the user and the where you want to create the user identified by and the uh, identified by and the password that I have to specify. Then you can create the user and you can give the grants of various privileges to the user. Now, if I want to give the grant, all the grants, then there is a there is a keyword all. Or if you want to specify the privilege list, you can specify that. Select, create, insert, update, delete. These are all the privileges you want to give. So that list you can specify. On which table you want to specify or the view. View is also another table we, that we create based on the based on the one or two more base tables. Two, username, role list that you have to specify whether you want to specify what is the role on the particular database and the public with grant option that is the syntax. Now what is the, see the Now, what is the syntax for the grant command? You have to specify that grant all. All means all the privileges or specify the privileges list. Delete, update, insert, create on the table name you have to specify or the database name you can specify to particular user or the particular role list or to the public. You want to specify and with the grant options. Now, you can see here the example grant all privileges using grant command. Grant all privileges, all you have to specify privileges on which database, company database to who the user that I have created just now. Or you can specify that grant, select, insert. These are the two privileges list on company database to the particular user. So this command is used to 
provide the grant to the particular users. And if you want to revoke that grants, then the command is revoke command. Revoke means withdraw the permissions, withdraw the privileges. From the user, it is used to revoke privileges or specific commands such as update or delete. It's not necessary that all the privileges you have given, all you want to withdraw, you can keep some of the privileges and some of the privileges you can withdraw. So the command syntax is revoke all privileges, relation name or view name from user or from the public and restrict and cascade. Now here restrict means this will revoke all the privileges along with all dependent grant privileges. Okay. So if you specify the privileges along with that other dependent grants also it will re revoke. It is called as cascading. The name itself suggests that it will revoke the all the other dependent grants also. This will revoke all the related grants only remove the grant only. So restrict it will not revoke all related grants. It will revoke the only those who you have specified in the list. The syntax is revoke all privileges because we have given in the previous example all privileges. You can remove all the privileges. So all privileges from company database from whom? From the same user. To review a user's current permission, what are the, if you think that what are the permissions you have given to the user Smith, then the command is show grants. It will show you list of grants that you have specified for the particular user. Drop command is used to delete a user. Drop user Smith, I have deleted, I have dropped the user. Now by this next, see the next command here, I have created a new user, create user test. The name of the user is test on the same machine, local host identified by password is test. Now user, you can log in with the root user and you can provide the various grant to the user. So I have given the grant list is create, alter, drop, insert, update, delete, select. The user can do all this on the database. Which database? Testdb.star. That is the database to which user test at the rate localhost. Now, once you log in with the test user, enter the password. Password is test here. It will show you, show the databases. Testdb is the database. So go to the particular database test DB. As the user has given you all the grants, you can create the table, you can alter the table, you can drop the table, you can insert data into the table, update the table, delete the table, select. So all DDL, DML operations you can perform. On, so create table, I have created the student table by using the test, update the data into the table, select the data from the student table and delete the, delete the records. So all these operations I can perform as I have provided grants to the test database, to the test user. Now next is what I have done. Again, I have login with the root user and I have revoked the privileges. Some of the privileges I have kept, create, insert, update, and some of the privileges I have revoked. So which re privileges I have revoked? Alter and delete. So user is not able to alter any of the table and user is not able to delete any of the data from the table. So once I revoke the privileges and again here I have login with the test user and try to alter the table. So alter table student drop column address. So it is showing that the alter command denied to the user test. So this is the effect of revoke command. So if the revoke, if I revoke some of the privileges, it will not allow you to alter or delete. See here, you can, you cannot delete the data from the student table where SID is equal to three. It is also showing that it is denied. So that's why grant command is used to provide the privileges and the whole command is used to withdraw the privileges. So thank you student. Hope you understood the concept of data manipulation commands and data control commands. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you very much.